Hey everybody, Dave here from Iographer. Today we're going to take a look at the newest version of Filmic Pro, our go-to video app. It's on our packaging. I'm going to show you why we love it so much. Um, if you, especially if you have an iPhone 6S or 6S Plus, um, you're going to love using uh, this app. So let's take a look at the basics of Filmic Pro. Let's go. So I'm going to launch Filmic Pro. And right away you see my image. Uh, it is my um, Mystery Machine Lego, which is one of my favorite Legos. Uh, it's my son's, but I took it from him. Um, right away you see this interface. Um, picture looks so good on the iPhone 6S Plus. I just love it. Uh, it's a little dark, so we're going to fix that. Um, and let's just go through the features. If you see up in the right-hand corner, there's a little uh, darkened edge. That's nothing to do with the camera or the app. It is my actual my table that I have. I have a standing desk that I'm using now and it just doesn't cover everything. So <laughs> let's look into what we have here. Going across from left to right on the bottom, this first thing is your uh, white balance. So if you wanted to get a white card out there, put it in front of the camera like that and then lock the white balance, you can do that. And it's easy to lock things, just simply press them. As If you see it in red, that means it's locked. Next is the focus button. So that controls the square right here. So I'm going to move, as you see if I move it over here, it gets a little out of focus. Put it right on uh, his face right there. So we're going to lock that. And then uh, over here on the right is your exposure level. So how much light do you want to let in? If you drag it around, you can see I can blow it out. I can go a little darker. Maybe let's, let's just go a little like right there. I'm going to keep it at. So we'll lock that. So now everything's locked. I'm good to go. I can actually start shooting. It's really that simple. Um, if you see over here on the, on the far right side, on the bottom is the red button. If I press that, I'm starting to get uh, numbers going. So literally, you could just go out and do that and get going and start filming right away. It's really that simple. But there's so much more under the engine, so let's take a look. I'm going to stop that for now. Uh, I want to review what I just shot, so I can actually go into this uh, film strip right here. Click on that, and there's my film. It's showing me I did it in 12, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second and 32 megabits. It's 58 megabits on 48 kil uh, kilohertz. Uh, it's my audio. So I'm going to press that, and there it is, and that's annoying. And now I can go, and it's just plain, but it's not moving, so you don't really see anything. One of the cool, powerful parts of this part here uh, is that there's some options on the right side here. So I can, I can do a quick edit. I can click on that and drag my handles left and right to edit. Uh, underneath that is some color correcting. So I can go in here and choose my exposure level. Just click OK, and then the next one my contrast, so I can bump it up a little bit, click OK. It's my white balance, so I want to change that. And then here's some color options, saturation, get a little more blue, and down below here is my tint. Looks like 1950s, 1970s when this show was out. So, and I press click there, right, right here, and now if I ch click, uh, click the check mark up on top, it will actually render it out into that uh, look that I just made, but don't want to do that, so I'm going to reset everything. Uh, and then we're going to click the X to get out of here, and the X again, and we're back at this uh, main area. Once you're in here, if uh, there's things you don't want, I shot some stuff at my friend's gym the other night, so I don't really need it anymore. I'm just going to delete that, and it just sliding to the left, deletes things. And we'll go back. And here I am again. Uh, things are not as they seem, so I have to reset them. You can also make presets, and we'll talk about that in a more advanced area. Uh, but I'm going to relock my focus there and relock my lighting, and now I'm set to shoot again. Let's look up at the top here, this little arrow. If I click on it, it, it shows me a lot of things I can deal with here. So, excuse me. If I click on the first one, it is my audio, so now I have this meter. I can raise it and lower it, and you see it kind of moving in there, above the numbers there. You'll see it going. This is my gain. So I can change the gain, how much audio I want to let in. 
You know what? Here's a great time to show you something. I'm going to slide up for a minute. And I'm going to turn this on airplane mode. That's why I'm getting all these notifications, and we really don't need that. <laughs> so if you ever get, uh, when you're about to shoot something, it's a great little uh, uh, tip for you is to always put your stuff in, sh in airplane mode. Uh, just because you never know you get a phone call or you get an email or some kind of alert as you've been seeing I'm getting these Instagram alerts um, and then we'll go back here and recolor it again there we go um, next to the audio is the rule of thirds which is very important so right now I might want to come over this way a little more so I've got more space there I want to be I don't want to be dead center uh, it's not such an absolute show of an amateur being dead center on everything. So I'm going to move that over a little bit. And uh, let's rule of thirds. I don't like to use that anymore. But uh, you definitely can if you need that. This next one here is turns on the uh, stabilization mode in the iPhones. Um, I turn mine off because uh, it takes a lot more rendering power. I really don't need it. Um, I can always uh, use it later, especially if I'm using my iographer and it's nice and stable. So that's a um, good thing to do. Uh, right here, the information. So if you click on that, it'll open up the manual, which is this really in-depth manual. I highly recommend um, downloading it and having it in like a Dropbox or something so you can always get to it later. So that's super cool. Over here on the far right is the light. So I want to turn the light on. Now I'm really lit up and um, let's say I'm out doing some shots, some interviews at night. Oh my God, I forgot my LED light. I can crank that on and, and uh, have a little bit of light there. Let's reset this for a second. A little blown out. And then of course I can click the last button, turns it around and there I am shooting against my green screen and there's no light, it's very dark. <laughs> and we'll go back. Okay, so that's the basics of the things across there. I'm going to close that. Let's dive under the hood here a little bit. This is really cool. They, they did a new interface, which I think is fantastic. Uh, very touch interface, I guess, with the new Swift code that Apple has. Um, it's super cool. So I'm going to press this uh, gear button. And right there is everything um, I need to deal with. And I don't have to leave my, my video set up. So... Resolution, by default, um, I don't care what device you're on, it's going to come over at 1920 by 1080. Uh, most of the time it's going to be 24 frames per second, so unless you're trying to shoot real filmic kind of things, you might want to change that. Um, so resolution is that. Now, because I'm on the iPhone 6S uh, Plus, I have other options. And if you have the 6S or 6S Plus, um, you have the same situation. From HD, I can click it on the right here, and I can go to 2K, so 1152p. I can click it once again. I can go to 3K, and I can go to 4K. So 4K quality, I can go from 75 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second. So just think... Uh, Massive amounts of video. Um, so if you're trying to do something quick for the internet um, on your phone, you might want to stick it to 1080. But if you're trying to do something that you want to master in and then use it later and down res it into 1080, um, we can talk about all that. I'm going to do some workflow stuff on as well. Um, I love shooting everything at, at 4K now on the iPhone. It looks beautiful. I can crop it um, if I want. If I wanted to take out a certain part of it and just bring that something else into more of a center frame on a 1080 timeline, I can do that because um, I have way more pixels to play with. So we'll leave it there at 1080, I mean at uh, 4K. Underneath that's my frame rate. So 4K at 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, or 30. 24 is what's known as the filmic look. So filmic meaning the film, like you only saw a movie in the theaters, that's what they usually shoot at 24 frames per second. 25 frames per second, for those that don't know, is what's called PAL, um, and that is what the standard is in European countries. Um, we don't shoot that here in the United States. Uh, 30 frames per second is pretty much your video quality, your video standard, um, has that video look. Um, I like to shoot it in 30 right now, especially if I'm just shooting interviews or things like that, and I'm not trying to do like documentaries or feature films or something like that. I just keep it in 30. Um, you always want to have it sync. So up on the top here, it says sync audio. So you want to have the audio the same frame rate as that. Now you can change all this. So I can go here and go 29 frames per second and 
20 ninths per second uh, playback. So I can do tons of stuff here and we're going to dive way deeper in this in the next video. But right now I just want to get the basic features out to you. So let's go back. So we've done our resolution. We've done our frame rate. Now we're going to look at audio. So down here you have options for your microphone, your front or back. If you have it plugged into an external mic, it'll show up here as well. Um, you can also choose video only. If you're just shooting video, I, I would recommend getting some kind of audio just in case you never need it. Um, automatic gain is uh, correction is enabled. Um, on the fence about that, still trying to see if I want to keep that enabled all the time or not. Um, I'll let you know more about that. What it's basically doing is uh, if, if things get too loud, it's correcting them. I don't really know. If I, I'd rather do that manually. Same with the peak limiter. Um, I might not want that as well. Um, and then uh, voice processing enabled. Uh, I'm not sure what that does yet, so we'll have to look at that in the advanced tutorial. Uh, device. So do I want to save it directly to camera roll? Or it, what it does is it saves to the Filmic Pro library. Uh, but you can also, from the library, save it to the camera roll. So you have it in two um, locations. So um, I just save it to the Filmic library because I go from there into um, either I edit from here, I'll save it to the camera roll, or I'll just pick it up on my iMac, whatever, and, uh, and drag it in from the uh, iTunes store. Um, orientation lock, self-explanatory. Uh, 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 let's see. Tap to hide interface. So those things are some options that you can definitely get into. Presets here. We'll talk about presets in a more advanced um, tutorial. Hardware was also something we'll talk about. As you know, we've been on our website. We're starting to do the Moondog um, anamorphic adapter. It's fantastic. Um, We'll do a whole tutorial um, just using that. Um, the also the N Cinema Turtleback adapters. Um, we are starting to sell those as well um, by another company. Uh, it's called Tourniquet, who uh, is uh, providing those with us. And so I'll show you what that all means. Cover photo lens does really apply to us. Um, if you have a cover uh, case, you can use our lenses. Purchase gear. If you click on that, it takes you to the Filmic Pro website where iographer gear is as well. So it's cool. And that's kind of it for this intro. Down here in the middle, I really didn't talk about that, but that's your time code. On the left is your battery level. On the right is how much storage you have left in your uh, iPhone uh, or iPad or whatever. And once again, if I click on that and you see the code running, now we're shooting in 4K. And while we're there, I might just bump up my lights a little bit. So I'll do about 10 seconds. So I did 10 seconds of that 4K footage. Let's see how big it is. So it's 137 megabits, or, I'm, I'm megabytes, I'm sorry, uh, for 10 seconds, okay? So just remember, now look down below it, it's uh, 1920 by 1080, and we shot 14 seconds, and it was only 58 megabits, uh, megabytes, sorry. Um, so when you're shooting in 4K, know that it's going to be a big file. Uh, but it's going to be very clear and beautiful. Let's see what I shot here, if I can take a look. Let's see, I changed the. Let's we'll take this outside and do some more cool stuff with it, so you can really see um, the options you have here. Super cool. Well, I hope you like this introductory tutorial. We have many more coming. Uh, this is Filmic Pro. I think you see why we think it's so great. Um, it's a great app. It's easy to use, um, and the advanced features just make it one of the best apps out there, if not the best video app out there. I'm Dave Basulto. Thank you for being an iographer, and we'll see you soon.